Hello, Zero K fans! Jack Free CD3 with the finals for the June 2012, oh, sorry, June 2014 2v2 tournament. Yeah, not 2012, that was two years ago. What am I thinking? June 2014 20, 2v2 tournament finals. Andrew and the Sponge versus Cuban and Turner Rookie. Go, double checking the brackets. Yeah, we have. We did the bronze match earlier, although if you're watching this on YouTube, I'm not going to put it there. I. The reason I'm doing this later than normal as replays as opposed to live is because I had some points to get to, but also the bronze match that took for bloody ever. Honestly, I might put it on Twitch. I'm not going to put it on YouTube. I really was getting very tired and cranky by the end of it. And I do not like putting unprofessional stuff on YouTube. I don't like making unprofessional stuff, but honestly, I, yeah, I kind of just ran out of patience. I feel a bit bad about that, but anyway, on to the main game. So. Beyond Tabula, which I have not actually shown as a map before on any cast, as far as I know. Let's begin and talk about the map afterwards. So, Anarchid going for Clokeybot Factory. Sponge going for Cloakie as well, while Cubay goes for Cloakie, and Eternal Rookie bucks the trend going for Light Vehicle Factory. So, Cubay and Eternal Rookie, I don't think will win. I mean, Eternal Rookie has been really good with raiding, but I think Anarchid and the Sponge are going to be better if I want to just say it. it's going to be even. But I think Anarchid and the Sponge are going to pull it out. However, Cubay does do a lot of really tricky strategies with transports, which could come up here. And Anarchid... Well, Anarchid and the Sponge are just good, solid players. Though the Sponge... Wait, was that? No, that was a different game. They're getting timid. Yeah, so Anarchid and the Sponge... They do okay. They do quite well. I apologize, I can't really remember what the other games were. I probably should just... Reviewed them as I do have the videos. That was a little silly, but I wanted to get this started as soon as possible. And we do have Turner Rookie getting his darts. He sees what's going on. He sees double cloaky, which actually is the second double factory I've seen, pretty much ever. You don't have to see double cloaky either. It was double hovercraft was the original one. That was what map was that even on? I can't remember what map that was on, but that was an earlier game during the semifinals. At some point we had double hovercrafts. And it actually worked out, I think it worked out less well than I thought it would. I can't remember. I'm even bothering trying to remember. It was like, I, that was with like six hours sleep getting up at two in the morning. I don't think I'm going to be able to remember much, much of anything without watching the film, without watching the footage again. Anyway, the sponge is, well, the turn wiki coming in with a couple scorchers to hit the sponge's forces. Although Sponge and Anarchid are going pretty heavily for some harassment along the north side. They want to just get in, possibly get rid of one of the players completely. But right now, Eternal Rookie does have a Lotus. That's all he has right now, but he does have a Lotus, and that is saying something. That will stop a few... Well, actually, four Glaives? That will... That'll be even. The question of positioning the Eternal Rookie's commander being in the way will be a problem. Cubay, on the other hand, expanding to the south, while Eternal Rookie not expanding quite as much. And Cubay going for an attack from the south with Glaives. There's a defender in the way, but that's it. No lotuses or anything. So these glaives are going to tear apart all of Anarchid's forces. Nice early raid by Cubay. That that could very well define the game at this stage. And right now, admittedly, Cubay and Eternal Rookie have a slightly smaller army than Anarchid and the Sponge. But still, oh, if he got the factory, I don't think he's going to get the factory. He's going for the solar plants instead. He's keeping the power economy down a bit. Got rid of a lot of the metal economy, which is big. So admittedly, Anarchid does have... Wait, no, he doesn't? What? Oh, I guess Anarchid doesn't have that metal economy. So, yeah. Anarchid is... Oh, and now the Sponge losing one of his metal extractors. That's a pretty decent blow. So, not a bad fight. They're not a bad attack. Getting rid of a lot of stuff. Actually, ooh, nice. Good micro there. Getting rid of a couple glaives and nearly killing it. They're not quite killing it, though. That ultimately won't make a difference. If it's not dead, it's not dead. That's all that matters. Anarchid, however, going for a counter raid. With his glaives, he attacked from the north side as well. She got rid of Eternal Rookie's mechs as well. At the same time. Though Eternal Rookie has been rebuilding a bit faster. So Cubay and Eternal Rookie are slightly ahead this game. That's right off the bat. They're starting up ahead. And Cubay apparently has been practicing. Judging by his performance compared to the last time he was in a tournament. Doing a lot better. I should, probably should have pointed that out earlier. Because he's been doing quite well this entire series. Like I said, Anarchy and the Sponge, I think, have an edge. Have a slight edge between Cubay and Eternal Rookie. But it's going to be close. It's going to be 3-2. Like, no matter how it goes, I don't think it's going to be done in less than five games. And Eternal Rookie losing a couple Scorchers, and he's just... 
not quite microing as well, and thus he's switching over to levelers. Oh no, he's, okay, Scorcher leveler. He wants to have a bit of raiding potential because Eternal Rookie, as we saw earlier, much earlier, he does have a fondness for raiding. He really enjoys raiding, and this map is a little tricky for it, honestly. There's not a lot of easy ways around that water kind of gets in the way. Along the south side, for well, the southeast and the northwest side, there are some paths to get in for units, which is true for vehicles. Like, vehicles can get in as well. This, yeah, these ramps, they're fine for vehicles. No real big problems there. However, like I said, Leveler, that's what Eternal Wiki needs, because he gets rid of the Glaives, doesn't worry about micromanagement of the Raiders, just kill all the Glaives of the Ride Cannon. Because yeah, if you aren't too confident in your ability to do Raider Micro well, switch to Riots. That's what I find, at least. I mean, work on your Raider Micro, because that's very powerful to have, but switch to Riots if you want to win the game. And Cubay coming in for another round of harassment, going down with a couple Glaives to the southeast side of the map. Gonna get rid of one Metal Extractor, and probably get rid of the Anarchist Glaives as well. We'll see though, nice angle coming in on those Glaives. Yes, gets rid of all the Glaives, losing none of his own, and gets rid of a Conjurer as well. Nice kills there. Anarchist Commander is coming in, probably has a Riot Cannon. No, it doesn't, just Laser Blaster, not upgraded yet. Probably will have a Riot Cannon when upgraded. And now, we are gonna see these Glaives, two of them are gonna die to the Defender, although it looks like they're gonna go through the trees. No, they're gonna try to avoid the Defender entirely. In fact, oh, one of them does die. One of them dies, and Kyubei once again has to micro around these trees to get around these glaives, and Anarchid not paying as much attention here as he should be. Because now Kyubei sneaks fast, gets another metal extractor, and Anarchid and the sponge, they have been expanding to the center pretty effectively, but still, nice raids in the main base. Taking on a metal extractor here and there, that just slows down their economy and giving Kyubei and Eternal Rookie just that much more of an edge that they need. Those are, those are good harassments, those are good raids. Although I think QA might be going... Okay, 10 Glaives? If it doesn't destroy a factory, then this is probably a waste. Or kill a commander. Then I think 10 Glaives is a bit overkill. Especially since we do see that Sponge and... Sponge and Anarchid are moving pretty heavily into the center. So is Eternal Rookie, though. Eternal Rookie is actually pushing very far forward. Far for more forward than QBay is. And getting ahead economically as a result, but it's a bit more risky. Moving on Scorchers does get rid of one of the Rockos, but it's hard for the Scorchers to get rid of Rockos. The Rockos and Scorchers do not... So Rockos surprisingly move... How fast do they move? 2.2 to 3.7. Well, they have half the speed, but yeah, it's still enough apparently with the kiting. I guess the Scorchers are dodging the Rockets. That does slow them down somewhat. I have to turn around, dodge the Rockets. And here come the Glaives. They are... Are they being contested? Anarchids, he's behind Cubase Glaives. I think Cubase Glaives is going to tear everything apart. We'll see, though. Because it really comes down to... Oh, actually, wow. Three of them go down to defenders. Well, three defenders, so no real advantage, no terrain advantage they could take advantage of that time around. Couldn't get behind trees to, to avoid getting killed. And Anarchid's Glaives do catch up, and now running parallel to Cubase. At the same time, we do have center of the map, some Scorchers and Rockos fighting out. But the Scorchers are able to kill the Rockos. Looks like this one last Scorcher... Ooh, nice stop there. Good time to stop. And Cubase does retreat with these Glaives. Takes out that southeast side, but knows he can't really get into the main base, so he does not lose the glaze. He loses four of them. At the cost of a metal extractor and a few defenders. Still inside their territories. Anakin and the Sponge. They're taking a lot of damage, but it is in their territory, which means and they're taking a lot more units in the territory, so they can reclaim it. Still, Eternal Rookie setting up well, defender in the center of the map, not a terrible idea. But right now, Eternal Rookie and Cubay do have forces that are kinda countered pretty directly by Rocco's. Gotta be honest, I think Ravager would work decently well. Scorches are a good plan, but Glaives, Glaives are what Cubase should be building right now. I can see why he's, and he actually has a lot of them, so he just needs to send them to the center. He's been using them for raiding, which, I mean, true to their name, or rather true to their role. I was thinking Warriors as well, we saw earlier today that Warriors are also very viable assault units in large numbers, but there are Rockos, a Rocco I should say, in this group. If that Rocco goes down, the Warriors can just plow through. However, this stage in the center of the map, we do see Eternal Rookie Doing a pretty good job tearing apart the forces that are already here. Tearing apart Kiwi's forces, just cutting through them and basically forcing, splitting them apart. Just divide and conquer strategy works out pretty well, apparently. Well, because I mean, on the one hand, you divide and conquer, but on the other hand, you're surrounded. So it's a bit risky. Against Scorchers, not so successful due to the fact that Scorchers do deal dam more damage at close range. But still, the Sponge is doing a pretty good job keeping Eternal Rookie back. Not so much Cubay though. Cubay able to get in with the Warriors. Gets rid of a lot. Oh, that's a lot of Glaze he's getting rid of. They're all clumped up, which is perfect for the Warriors. Although one of the Warriors is going to go down. 
The other warrior... Actually, it's also... They're both going to go down, though... A lot of glaives went down in the process. However, once again, this is all inside of Anarchist territory, so Anarchid can easily reclaim all this stuff. I, wow, that's a lot of reclaim. Wow, Anarchid right now has about... 1,200 metal, or al almost 1,300 metal for reclaim. Thanks to Cubase attacks. Like, that first couple... The first couple raids were okay, but this is getting excessive. Cubase is just assaulting far too heavily into the main base. With units that don't do the best job of doing it. However, oh, nice nice shot with Eternal Rookie, killing off all these glaives that the Sponge has, leaving, I think, two. No, three. Oh, there's a couple at low... Nope, there we go. Pretty much just leaving four. The Sponge was still building more and more glaives. He's pushing heavily into glaives, as well as getting in... No, he's aborting his air switch. Went for an air switch, but just switching out of that. While Anakin goes for the air switch instead. As does Eternal Rookie Kube, not bothering with that. We do see that... Kube setting up massive amount of defenders in the center of the map. Hopefully this map... Well, sh this map isn't much of a slog map. It's open enough that it does allow for ways around it, so it doesn't tend to slog too much. So I think I have watched a few replays on this map. I don't think I've cast any replays on it, but I have watched a few. And Kube cornering a bunch of Anarchist forces that went in for a raid. Pretty powerful raid, mind you. Got rid of a couple of Metal Extractors from Kube. And center of the map, we still have... Okay, Leveler and Rock is going at it. Not much to be seen here. The Rock is just getting hit by defenders. And air battles are starting. Swift's coming in for... Sean Rook, he's sacrificing one of his Swifts for nothing. Trying to kill some of Anarchist Swifts, but it looks like he's going to lose two of them. He's not... No, he lost two of them already. And Anarchist continue to harass Kube's expansion to the south. While Anarchist himself expands pretty riskily to the north. Eternal Wookie could take advantage of this, but I think at this point, Anakin and Sponge are starting to turn it around. I mean, there are the Phoenixes, and that is becoming a bit of a problem. Taking out a lot of the forces from Cube, sorry, from Anakin and the Sponge. That's Eternal Rookie's Phoenix. That's not Anakin's Phoenix. Anakin doesn't actually have any Phoenixes right now. He's mostly gone for Swifts. Trying to just maintain air control, not so much trying to actually convert into ground yet. Apparently he's just a bit less confident he can do that. He's worrying about taking out as many forces as he can before that happens, and actually pretty much has air control. I don't know why he hasn't built a few Ravens or a few Phoenixes at this point. He is focusing decently heavily into Cloakies, but he hasn't... He's not using all of his metal or energy. He could build more planes. I don't know why he isn't. A little odd, and I think Eternal Wiki is going to... Oh, Eternal Wiki's also not building a whole lot. But he is pumping everything in the Light Vehicle Factory. He is building a few more planes as well. And Kube going for a gunship switch into Tridents to help with anti-air, keep air control in Team Red's hands. However, at the same time, we do have Eternal Rookie trying to just deal with quite a few glaives, actually. Getting rid of a lot of glaives for just a couple Scorchers. Zeus's are being a problem, but the glaives not so much, and there goes all those glaives. So the center of the map is pretty much just a constant meat grinder at the moment. Neither player can really attack the center and get away with it. They're going to lose their units in the process. So we see, like, this happening. The Warriors coming around the side, trying to harass where it's less well defended, because the center, while it is heavily well defended, is also a, a small valley, so high ground advantage isn't going to be a big deal. And just go around the sides. No one's going to really be defending the sides very likely. Although Anarchid is setting up a bunch of defenses over to the north side, which is a bit more forward. But his undefended expansions are being attacked by Kube quite effectively, getting rid of a few metal extractors here and there. And we do have a small tick in the center, but it looks like it just stunned out stunned out a lot of Eternal Rookies and Kube's forces. So giving Anakin the Sponge a bit more room to maneuver into the center. I talked to Google Frog about this. Google Frog manipulated the the defense ranges widget to make it more efficient. But unfortunately, when you are on defense ranges off if new buildings get built, it then builds... It shows the defense ranges of the new buildings even though you have them disabled. So you have to re-enable and disable them again. Small bug. Anyway, Anakin going in for the northwest side and not going to be able to harass out anything. Damaging a metal extractor but not actually killing it. At the same time, Kube coming in and destroying everything that Anarchid has set up. Nylon his entire base, as well as alongside the southeast. So Kube is just ripping apart everything Anarchid's built up. Nice split, I should point out. These glaives... Nicely split across to get rid of every single metal extractor, though this one to the south is going to... It's going to kill the metal extractor and then die soon after. But the others are going to get away scot-free. One of them's already succeeded. The others already succeeded. All of them have gone into their mission. There is one metal extractor left, which is just being spotted out. QBA is going to go for that probably as soon as he can. But still, the warrior... Okay, the warrior finally goes down. 
after taking out this Metal Extractor once again, putting Anarchy in the Sponge a bit behind and keeping Eternal Rookie up, although Eternal Rookie probably should take the north side now. He has that as an option for him. QBA is taking the south side. Retaking the south side, I should say. He initially took it. He's taking it again. Make sure Anarchy doesn't get his hands on it once again, because that that was a lot of metal, and that's 10 metal, I think. No! Oh, never mind! Holy crap, there's four... I forgot to point this out. Four metal spot right here. So, no, that was... This alone was about 14 metal. Or, sorry, 12 metal. With this, would be 14 metal. So, altogether, it's about 16 metal in this section. That's a lot of metal. That is huge. That is half of the current economy for pretty much any player right now. So getting those metal extractors to be a big deal. And tick goes... Not a tick. That's, that's a Zeus that goes off. Now, for warriors, don't do especially well against Reapers. Or, well, they do for cost. But, unfortunately, that wasn't a whole lot of warriors. There's a lot of other units. Cubase going to have to switch out a bit. He might want to get some sharpshooters on top of these warriors just for the heavier units to deal with them. Dowie's going to do that, though. He's probably going to worry... Or let Eternal Rookie worry about that. Although Eternal Rookie getting Ravagers, Levelers, Scorchers, not really changing up his unit composition very much. And I can't say I blame him. The unit composition has been working okay. Scorchers over getting into the middle of the Zeus. Ooh, that was a nice EMP shot there. All the Zeus is stunning out the Scorchers. I think no Zeus died there, actually. That was a bit of a waste of Scorchers, unfortunately. And the Sponge trying to keep control of the North. Really trying to keep control of the North. It's not going to work out, though. These levelers are coming in, and then Eternal Ricky can just take the North finally for himself. I'm sure he was wanting to do that for a while. But yeah, Eternal Rookie does have... Hmm, what does he have here? Well, he does have... Nothing, actually. Anarchid's getting rid of what QB had. Eternal Rookie didn't have anything to the south. Eternal Rookie is starting to... He has some levelers here. Got rid of the Glaze. Foregone conclusion, that's why I didn't really bother with it. But yeah, got rid of those glaives. Some of them managed to escape. And a bunch of them going... Oh, a bunch of Cubase glaives going over through the water. Are they... Well, yeah, they can actually go up this hill. Wow, Cubase going really off the side. Not sure why these glaives are stopped, though. Really should... They need to move up that cliff. If they're going to go, they've got to go now. He wants to take care of the Sponge's wind farms. Because the Sponge... Actually, that is something that the Sponge and Anarchid were doing before. In fact, in their match against Google Frog and Aquanim... They did a lot of map control related stuff, and especially this chain of wind generators. That was a huge thing that they did. They did that a lot. It's a very powerful overdrive tactic, but at the same time, it does leave itself vulnerable because it is wind generators. Unfortunately, the Glaives didn't go up and actually deal with them in time. QB has apparently lost his focus on those Glaives. Focusing instead on the south side of the map with a bunch of Conjurers and Brawlers finally making that gunship switch actually show up. Not sure how well the Brawlers are going to work, though, and the Trident is taking care of Eternal Rookie's Air Forces quite well, but at the same time... Wow, extremely well. And, sorry, get rid of Anarchids, not, not Eternal Rookie's. That would be that would be really bad if Cubay started attacking Eternal Rookie's forces. I don't know what I'd have to say to that. That'd be terrible team play. He's on your team, you don't attack him outright. No, he's not going for team killing. He is, however, killing off Anarchids forces. Over the ground-based anti-air, a little bit harder to deal with, and unfortunately Brawlers have a hard time getting rid of Sm oh, relatively small numbers of heavy units. That's where Black Dawns shine. But no Black Dawns are under construction. And finally, the Glaives are moving up at the northeast side. It really could have been far more. It could have been a dozen more Glaives that did this. But they are moving up and... Why are they not... Move up, Kyube. You can move up. You can deal with this. This is a replay, mind you, so not like you could possibly be watching live and stream sniping and actually listening to my advice, which hopefully no one was doing. But I had a delay. So if someone was doing that, it wouldn't have been as effective. Still, the Sponge... Tearing apart Eternal Rookie's defense setup. Eternal Rookie did start to take the Metal Extractors, but not that quickly. However, Cubay is taking out these wind generators as best as he can. The Sponge does have some defensive forces, as does Anarchid. Wait, that's not Anarchid. That is... That's Eternal Rookie's. Wait. Yeah, that is Eternal Rookie's Swift. Moving in there, and a lot of wind generators are going down. The Sponge losing a fair amount of overdrive as a result of that. Quite a few Metal Extractors becoming less overdriven than they could otherwise be. Looks like that's the only area that's being attacked, though. It's it's a good harassment, but it's not everything. Anarchid has about 50 metal right now. He's taken the south side. Knock on the north side, though. The sponge being forced back from there. The sponge is taking the north side. He has a nice hold on it. Cubay's keeping some security there. Cubay at the northeast part of the, south, of the sponge's base. Tearing apart more metal... Sorry, more wind generators. Metal extractors are already dead. Tearing apart more wind generators as he goes down the line. Ripping 
all of them apart. Make sure you need to be careful with these glaives. They don't get too close to them when they blow up. That could be fatal. Actually, that is fatal. Unfortunately for Kyube, he loses one of his glaives just to that, and the sponge is able to finish them off. But still, that was a good harassment. Just doing that again, or something like that, or a bunch of napalm bombers around the back, that would work really well. I think, does Kyube, er, does, er, does Eternal Rookie still have any napalm bombers? And Singularity Reactor, that, seriously? Singularity Reactor. You're, you're funneling 20 metal into Singularity Reactor. I mean, I guess they have an advantage, but not by much. Actually, Kyube, sorry, Kyube is the weakest army right now. The Sponge has the strongest, largest army by metal. Mostly Zeus's, but still, largest army by metal. And this is only a quarter of it, by the way. Sorry, a third of it. Where's the rest of his army? Oh, most of his Reapers. Okay, that makes sense. Like, 8,000 metal of it is Reapers. That'd be, that being said, though, this is... That's nine Reapers, or ten Reapers, actually. That's that's not saying nothing. That's quite a lot here. Turn Rookie with his Machine Gun Commander. Up front, getting threatened by the Reapers pretty heavily. Moving it back just to avoid getting hit by them, but the Reapers are basically going to plow through this area if they aren't stopped. Dominatrix is coming in for Eternal Rookie. I don't think it's going to work. Gotta be honest, I do not think that's going to work because... I believe the capture rate is dependent on health. It's linearly dependent on health, too. So it doesn't actually scale up that much as they get damaged. In other words, Reapers pretty much are uncapturable in any reasonable amount of time. Although two Dominatrices are able to take one Reaper, but the Dominatrices are going to go down... And that Reaper's going to be freed. Although it looks like that Reaper's going to get itself killed by its old friends before it dies. So at least that's one Reaper down. And another Reaper does not go down, does not get captured. Like I said, the entire center being broken by the Reapers. Cube and Eternal Rookie losing that part of the center. And Cube trying to counterattack along the southeast side of the map and along the northwest side of the map. Dealing a decent amount of economic damage, though at this stage, I don't know if that matters. He needs to get rid of these Reapers. He does disable them. Nice disarm. To at least slow them down, stop them from dealing much damage. Not a whole lot of ground forces to follow up, but still, he does have nice Thunderbird shot there. And more, like I said, the warrior coming in here, just tearing apart the sponge's economy. All these wind generators currently generating two energy per second. The winds are high at the moment. But unfortunately, the warrior not being focused on, and it does go down. Cube focusing more on the southern warriors, which are dealing with Anarchid's wind farm, which isn't that extensive. Now, at the same time, we do have Anarchy coming in with some scythes. One of the scythes does get captured and starts turning on its, its former comrades. Another one gets bombed out, and yet another gets taken, so Eternal Rookie has just taken two of Anarchid's scythes. Not sure what he's going to use those on, but he does have them. It's good to point out. He has those scythes. He can use them on anything he wants, and the Reapers have been... They've been pushed back, but they haven't died, so that's not a good target, by the way. That is not a good target, except maybe the weakened one, but that's... Nah, I wouldn't bother with that. However, more size are already in play. Anarchid is... is built, yeah, he's building size as part of his his standard Q involves sides. However, Kube coming in with 20-some-odd glaives. Well, fewer now, thanks to that warrior, just destroying all of them, but 20-some-odd glaives coming in. More harassment. Kube's been going heavily for this. I think this is what I mean... I said before, this many glaives, he better kill a factory. And I think he's going to succeed. At least he can get some caretakers out. Strider Hub is up, by the way, which I really wish was in the bronze match. No one built a Strider Hub in the bronze match, which annoys me to no end. But yeah, if they kill a factory, that's going to be good. They kill some caretakers, which is handy. Does slow down factory production, does force floating. But at this point, Anarchy and the Sponge actually have very little metal left, thanks to that harassment. And that Cloakabout factory goes down along with all the glaives that destroyed it. Airplane plant still up and running, but the Cloakabout factory is down. And Anarchy didn't have a lot of cloaky bots on the field when that happened. A few rockets, a few Zeuses, and a couple sides. That was about it. And another Thunderbird attack coming in, not hitting the Reapers, hitting the Zeuses, however. Able to capture a Zeus, actually. One of the Zeuses does get captured, but it is currently disarmed, so that doesn't do it a whole lot of good. Probably is going to end up getting a suicide. Yeah, that Zeus is going to die. Still, that's a Zeus that goes down for nothing. I mean, turn look, he just got a Zeus dead for free. At the same time, Cube coming in, getting rid of a couple razors. Well, one of them under production, just one of them. The other one has been built and is currently in tank mode. Not going for the direct assault yet. I mean, a Thunderbird on these Lotuses would just... That would open everything up. Yeah, Dominatrix is up here, and it's going to be tough. We do have Phoenixes coming in for Anarchy. He's focused entirely on air now, since he has... Well, he can. Getting a Heavy Tank Factory of his own. So, double Heavy Tank. Going for double Cloakie to double Heavy Tank. A few 
well, enough Phoenixes could come in and deal with this. And now the Singularity Reactor is up. Eternal Wiki has a couple hundred energy. And his overdrive is insane now. 8.2 on each metal electric. That's four times overdrive. How many? On its entire grid from the looks of it, yeah. A couple, no, not his entire grid. A couple more pylons. Just use all this. Actually, if he manages to spread that over to this metal electric tractor here with a four metal, that'd be huge. But anyway, Thunderbird attack splits up the Reapers. Half of them are completely disabled. The other half are okay. And another attempt at Phoenix bombing the Dominatrices, which does not actually do anything. Doesn't manage to kill them, damages them a bit, sets one on fire and actually doesn't kill them, but one more assault like that could do the trick. Zeus is here to get rid of the Reapers. The Reapers, a couple of them at the front are being disabled, but not enough. Some Glaives coming in the back to try to distract the Zeus's, make them waste their shots, and it's not working too poorly. But it looks like even with that, Anarchid and the Sponge need to retreat. A couple of... Well, a couple of bombers coming in, Ravens coming in to try to help out. Not gonna matter too much, the Zeus is forcing the Sponge and... Well, Sponge primarily back. Anarchid doesn't have a whole lot on the ground, but the Sponge certainly does. But he's being forced back thanks to Eternal Rookie and Cubase forces. Mostly Cubase, though. But hey, Eternal Rookie gets some good captures in. Well, okay, forces a couple Glaives to die, not the best captures. The Glaives now coming in, trying to get rid of the Dominatrices. Not able to successfully do so, losing more of their number in the process. Actually, almost letting one of them get fully captured does get killed before it is actually useful besides that, but still, it, that's, that is useful regardless. Forcing it to die, that was a, that was an important little blow there. Now, the sponge has not yet rebuilt any of, a whole lot of his metal, his energy infrastructure. Some of it nearer to his main base he's rebuilt, but the stuff over to the northeast he has not yet rebuilt. Rebuilt the metal though, but not the energy. So overdrive is considerably weaker there. And Eternal Wiki and Cubay, massive economic advantage now, mostly thanks to the overdrive, and it looks like no, the pylons are not spread out. A lot of that is just Eternal Rookie's overdrive. Three to four times overdrive, that's a lot of power being spread in there. Like I said, you should probably spread that out more. That would be more efficient to do so. And not a bad Phoenix attack, but honestly, Phoenixes against Reapers do not do a great job. Reapers have way too much health for it to matter. And the Sponge says he can probably push in, go for a counterattack here. Zeus's are disabling a few Reapers, but still... Needs that Thunderbird. Where is that Thunderbird? It, if it comes in... Oh, there it is. There it is now. Stunning out all the Reapers. Twice. Just for good measure. Yeah, all the Reapers are stunned out for about 15, 15 seconds. Giving Cubay and Eternal Rookie time to push through the center. I should point out that the North and South have been solidly taken by Cubay and Eternal Rookie. Other way around. But yeah, they've been taken out by them. So it's... Pretty much game. Cubane and Eternal Rookie are just going to push in and win from here. This That's all there really is to it. They're going to push in, they're going to win, and we're going to be on to Game 2. But before that happens, we of course need to finish Game 1. And Sponge and Anarchid are not going to go down without a fight. They are pushing pretty heavily here. But even with the Harry pushes, it's not going to be enough. Try where they can't actually... Leco or Wyvern rather, a Wyvern. He builds one of those. There's enough Thunderbirds I think right now, but he builds a Wyvern. He has the metal for it. He has the energy for it. He could actually do it. He could pull it off in a reasonable amount of time. He's 2,000 metal, sure, but... Or wait. Yeah, 2,000 metal. He could do it. That would work especially well against the Reapers, but I don't think he's going to. Most players don't usually think to do that. It's not a common thing to have. But that'd be hilarious if he did. And that would actually work really well, too. I mean, Wyverns... Wyverns deal 2,000 damage in a shot. So yeah, get three or four of those and hit the Reapers. That would just finish off the Reapers right away. Though admittedly, this one, Cubay and Eternal Rookie both have as much of an army as the Sponge does. Anarchid's well behind that. But it looks like Anarchid spending... Oh, Anarchid making a Strider. Yes, he is! Anarchid is getting a Dante up. Doesn't have the metal to make it efficiently, though, or at least not... He's pushing 15 metal into... No, 10 metal, never mind. Striders are... Hubs are at 10, not 15. I think they used to be 15. Not anymore, though. That, that Dante is kind of behind. It's not really being built that urgently. And we do have another Thunderbird Strike just on a bunch of Rockos. Nothing too major, but at this point, I think... How many... Okay, 10 Thunderbirds. Are they all Eternal Rookies? Yeah, it looks like they are. 10 Thunderbirds for Eternal Rookie. That is working out pretty well for him, as we see. That's been stunning. Actually, that's been basically winning the game at this point. I mean, the economy advantage helps a lot. Though, a couple Zeus coming in to raid. They aren't going to be stopped too easily either, but I think it doesn't matter. Anarchid and the Sponge throw in the towel and blow everything of theirs up. They're taking their stuff and blowing it to smithereens. So that was game one.
Well done to Eternal Rookie and Cube for taking game one. So we'll see what happens next game, how that goes, because, like I said, this is a fairly even game. I'm guessing this is going to be, like I said, probably five games. Likely get a five game series. But before that happens, we need to move on to game two. Because in order to get five games, you need to go through game two, and then three, and then four. And it kind of needs to go back and forth with who wins. But we'll have that in just a moment for game two. So that is going to be... What's that going to be on? That's going to be on Comic Catcher Redux. We'll be back with that in just a moment. Stay tuned. Welcome back, Zero K fans! This is Jedi Free CC3 with another exhibition. Sorry, I'm not saying exhibition as the tournament! This tournament replay! Game 2 of Anarchy and the Sponge vs. Cube and Eternal Rookie on everyone else's favorite map, Comic Catcher Redux. Let's get started. Now, Sponge starting on the northwest side, Light Vehicle Factory. Anarchy going for heavy tanks, no surprises there. And Cube, Eternal Rookie going for Cloaky, interesting. And Cube going for light vehicles. I'm actually kind of surprised at the use of Cloak here. This this map is big. I mean, you can get away with Glaze, but everything else is going to be pretty much unwieldy. I don't know how you're going to get around with that. Anarchid, early Kodachi into Welder into Panther, while we do have... The Sponge goes for a couple darts and then goes fairly economical. It gets, well, gets a Mason, gets five Scorchers, another Mason, five Scorchers and Mason. Not a bad spread. We have, looks like, three Glaives to a... Conjurer for Eternal Rookie, and no builders yet for Cube. Cube is being extremely aggressive. Three Scorchers and two darts. The Sponge will be able to scout out what's going on. You'll see this. He'll die, or his units will die. They will die for their information, but hey, they'll get a lot of information in the process. And they'll blow up in a nice, fancy way. Yeah, they, they blow it up real good. Now, well, one dart going out, but at least... Hubei does know what Anarchid is up to. Anarchid is up to heavy tanks. Anarchid not going for the raid, though. He is going instead to defend. He does have Panthers, which should do the trick, but... Oh, not going to be constructed in time. In fact, not going to be constructed at all. Looks like that is on lower priority. That was strange. It wasn't being constructed. However, at the same time, we do have the darts in here for the sponge. Sees what Hubei is up to. Once again, blow it up real good. Click all the information I needed. Which is the important part. And a turn wiki going around the back will be... Oh, wow, that is getting rid of a Mason for free. Is there anything coming in? Well, there's some Scorchers that are going to try, but it's not going to be in time. Mason goes down before going to do much of anything. Anarchid taking a bit of damage to the Scorchers, but that wasn't a dive. At least not a successful one. They got burned to death by the Kodachi, and now the Panther is very nearly complete. Good thing he pushed the Kodachi back, because otherwise that would have probably cost him the game. Now, Eternal Rookie is moving forward with more Glaze. Like, he's going to be stuck in the Raider phase for most of this game. Just because he's going for Cloaky Bot Factory, I don't think that's going to allow him to even go for Rocco's. Like, maybe, maybe size, but yeah, I don't know. You don't see Cloaky often on this map, but you do see lots of vehicles. I'm guessing Eternal Rookie might go for an air switch, or maybe go for a gunship switch. Go for a warrior drop, which is what Google Frog did in their semifinals game. That was cool. Or Wait, was it Google Frog? I think it was. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that was Google Frog that did that. If he goes for that, that'd be awesome. Warrior drop with like 10 Valkyries. That'd be cool to see. Not sure that's going to happen, though. I kind of doubt it. Anyway, Cubane and Eternal Rookie are just building out slowly but surely over the map. Sam is Anakin the Sponge, though Anakin the Sponge are quite a bit behind, actually. Not building up that quickly. Looks like Anarchid focused... Okay, they both focused quite a bit on military. It's no surprise there, and... Well, part of that's just that they actually did a better job with military at this point. Let's suppose I'm a bit curious about Cloaky. Can heavy tanks, Kodashi just tear apart glaives pretty easily. Panthers also do a pretty good job tearing apart glaives. And Scorch is coming in for extra support, although they're going to get... Are they going to get stuck? No, they managed to drive through a little valley, or most of them do. And the rest of them got stuck. That was a little bit silly, but they do get through, ultimately. And going to be able to deal with the glaives without too much issue. So the Sponge pushing in pretty heavily. Well, Anakin and the Sponge, they are behind one game. Game two, Cuban and Eternal Rookie won the first game. A bit back and forth, but ultimately they won as a result of heavy use of Thunderbird. That really made the game for them. And also making sure the harassment early on helped, and Thunderbird at the end sealed it. Cube 
does have Scorchers of his own. He is trying to force these Scorchers back, but at this point, the Sponge is going to get some good kills. He's going to get a Metal Extractor, probably going to get a Conjurer. He's going to get a Solo Yeah, he's going to get a Conjurer, get a Solo Collector. Maybe get two Solo Collectors, hard to say. Not going to really focus on that. Going to focus more on Metal Extractors. However, a Tick is coming in, and that Tick goes out, stuns all but one of the Scorchers. Although, another Scorcher coming out from behind, so all but two, ultimately. But yeah, that does force the Scorchers back. And the rest of them do die. So they all get killed thanks to that tick. That was a good tick there. So right now, Cubey and Eternal Rookie aren't that far behind. But Anakin and the Sponge are putting a lot of pressure on them. It's going to be tricky for Cubey to get back. I mean, Cubey's doing okay, but Eternal Rookie is taking a lot of the pressure. Taking the brunt of that pressure. He is moving forward with his commander as well. It's upgraded. It will probably be the heavy machine gun. Or it should be. Chocolate Cookie, I'm pretty sure it's heavy machine gun. Same time, Anarchid getting rid of two of Eternal Rookie's mechs they just built. And the Sponge going for a dive! And it should be a successful dive too. Eternal Rookie's gonna try to jump into this crater here. And he is able to is he able to do it? Yes, just barely able, but unfortunately that crater is not vehicle unpassable. So he has not much time left. However, however, thanks to finishing his morph, apparently that resets the jump timer. So Eternal Rookie could actually jump out of there now. Oh yeah, it's a really small passage. Actually, no, it's impossibly small. So yeah, it is vehicle impassable. Eternal Rookie went to the right spot. It's close. I didn't know if it would be or not, but it actually is. But that being said, it's interesting that more finishing resets the jump timer. Not surprising though, because morphing actually means you replace one unit with another, engine-wise. But yeah, that jump timer probably shouldn't be reset on morph. That might explain a lot of the reason why recon comms are so powerful, or at least were back in the earlier buffs, but yeah. That jump reset on morph... Probably doesn't come up all that much, but it's still a thing. And it's still something to keep in mind. Now, it looks like Spider Factory coming in for Eternal Rookie. He is really going for the unsuitable factories on this map. I was expecting an Air Switch, but no, he's going for Spider Switch from inside here. I, okay, there is some terrain that will make that worthwhile, but honestly, not that much. There really isn't very much. This area here is probably the best spot that you could hope to go for and get to in order to actually do any ambushes. But probably going to go for straightforward, just mass venom. Mass Venom into Hermit, possibly Recluse as well, and just stun out everything while Cubey deals most of the damage. And actually, that seems to be working out okay. Cubey, not even at the point where we have the Venoms yet, Cubey just going for a nice raid on Anarchid, tearing apart a bunch of his melee threads, though he has to. He has half a dozen Scorches being used for this, getting rid of most of Anarchid's forces, actually. A lot of heavy tanks go down there. Pretty much all the that one Kodachi and a few welders are down for Anarchid. He's lost most of his army as a result of this. And well, the more of that goes down, that solar collector is also Well, that's getting disabled, not going down. This raider would be a good target. I haven't really been looking at vision of the players. Right now, Anarchid and the Sponge know what's going on, on their side, and Cuban and Eternal Rookie. Eternal Rookie has no radar. Oh wow, that's that is bad. That might explain a lot of what was going on, why he didn't respond to most of the stuff coming in. He has no radar. Cubey does, as do Anakin and the Sponge. Anakin and the Sponge know exactly what's going on in their territory, but Eternal Rookie does not know. And it looks like a bit of friendly fire there. Kodachi finishing off that metal extractor, helping out Cubey. Mild treason, only mild. It's not that bad. There are worse treasons, but yeah, accidental mild treason. And here come, oh no, it looks like it's going to be mostly heavy redback. No venoms yet, just redbacks at this point. And Eternal Rookie focusing all of his metal here. Three Caretakers on top of this. That's 40 metal, potentially, that could be pushed into that factor. Oh, 50. His commander's there, too. So 50 metal could be pushed in there out of 24. He's going to need a bit more metal extractors before that's going to be useful. But still, that is something. And Warrior's coming in to try to defend against the Scorchers, but it looks like the Sponge going for decent harassment, but it's all against solar plants. It's not the biggest deal. That's a lot... They take a lot of damage, so that buys time to be protected. But at the same time, nothing's actually coming in to try to protect them. Instead, Cubey going for a counterattack with a bunch of Ravagers. And Anarchid continuing to go... Okay, no, go, now he's going for Reapers. I'm going to say, continue going for Kodachis and Panthers. But no, he's going for Reapers now. And in fact, Cubey about to lose his factory. Light Vehicle Factory about to go down, as well as a lot of his metal extracts. I think this game is Anarchid and the Sponges. Yep, Cubey, his factory is just about dead. A couple of the Scorchers, one of the, the Scorchers is going to die, the factory dies, but... No, not quite, no, it stays alive. In fact, it morph if it wants to. Not sure why he'd want to do that exactly, but yeah, he could if he wants a Ravager inside of Cubey's base, for whatever reason. 
Cube heavily damaged as a result of that. Goes for a counter raid, but I think this is just being wasteful. He's wasted a lot of units, and he lost those Scorchers earlier on. He did a decent harassment with them, but apparently not enough. These Raptors doing okay, but still, he's just... He's dealing some damage, but not enough. And honestly, I don't know why the Scorchers... The Sponge's Commander does go down. Not a bad kill, but still, Redbacks... Redbacks are kind of frail. But apparently not too frail to deal with Lotuses. And that Light Particle Meme is powerful. I will give it that. So Redback, Swarm, just attacking and... Well... Finding kind of their match in Lotuses. Two of them do go down to the Lotuses. So right now, we're basically even trade between Lotuses and Redbacks. And Cube fighting with Anarchid's commander directly. Fortunately, Anarchid going for Riot Cannon Battle Com compared to Cube's Beam Laser Support Com. Cube has 1,000 less health though. He's actually, I think he's going to get rid of Anarchid. Yes, Anarchid about to lose his commander as well and not even bothering to save it. Anarchid loses his commander on top of that, so probably not going to save the game. Probably not going to give Cube and Return Rookie the game here. But at least they didn't go down completely without a fight. Got the comms out, but th this point is way too late in the game for that to matter. There's enough map control for Anakin and the Sponge. They can reclaim what they want. They can get the metal they want statically. And their commanders don't provide a whole lot of metal income. Relative to their current total metal income. I mean, a Reaper is moving in here, and this Reaper is going to be able to get away. I think. Will it? Well, let's see. Yeah, it looks like it will. It it's going to get away. Killing a few warriors, killing quite a lot, actually. Getting rid of... Wow, getting rid of one of the hovercraft factories. Another one has been rebuilt, but still got rid of the one. The Cube with that mace, trying to finish off the Reaper. Is it going to succeed? Yes, it will. It gets rid of the Reaper. A lot was lost to get rid of the Reaper, but that Reaper is now dead. That being said, though, yeah, there's like 2,000 metal worth of units bearing down here. Panthers and Kodachis, they'll just rip apart everything. This small section is going down. This metal treasure is going down, a lot of stuff is going down, and some ravens as well. anarchid has gone for an air switch. Didn't even notice this, but a few ravens coming in. Just to deal with what they can, which is a lot. Get rid of the metal treasure, get rid of the factory possibly. No, that's not their job. That is the job of the rest of the ground units to get rid of the factory. Burn it to the ground. That will not work, but hey. It's got a good ring to it. And Cubay's commander now coming under heavy fire, and it's going to go down. So Cubay losing his commander right now. 11 minutes into the game. Cube has lost his commander. That's a much bigger blow than it was for Anakid or the Sponge. Although, Eternal Rookie is... Yeah, Eternal Rookie wants to resign, and that is game. So, one and one for both sides, because that's how ties work. Yeah, one and one. Well done to Anakid and the Sponge. Nice pressure that entire game. I mean... Turn Rookie and Cube, they attacked decently well, but Cube lost a lot of forces in those raids. That often happens in Common Catcher, I find. I've seen before, what Floris pointed this out, I think in the last tournament, maybe the one before, that something that does happen, you gotta be careful about not doing. Losing units, especially in this corridor. Is this corridor right here that tends to have a lot of units getting lost? Because it's defended decently well, and you think you've done a lot of damage, you think you've buried yourself pretty far into their base and damaged a lot of their stuff, but you've also given them a great deal of metal thanks to your units that actually did the harassment. That was game two, and we'll be on to game three. Just a moment. This is best of five, by the way. So once game three is done, we'll be moving on to game four. We have to. And maybe game five, once, depending on how game four goes. But that will be for the next game, which will be up in just a moment. Stay tuned.